tip, food, and fun. I don't want you to miss it. Be a part of the kickback. I would like to take this time to thank our First Lady Candace Beavers and Brooke Smetley, the CEO and President of our credit union, for a job well done for the first time home buying seminar. What a great event it was. Thank you so very much for your hard work. It is that time again for a Team Star Weekend. November 6th and 7th, Saturday morning at 10 a.m., we will have the Ministry Fair, which is Step 104 of our Star University. Don't miss an opportunity to meet all our ministry heads and join a team. And then Sunday, we will have baptism service. So if you have made a decision to get baptized and haven't done it yet, please contact us here at the church at 205-833-3676 so we can get you on the list. There's so much going on here at the Star. We want to be sure that you stay connected and you can do that through our text messaging system. Text the word STAR to 94253. Again, that STAR to 94253. And if you've been with us for a while and you're ready to join Team STAR, text the word DECISION to 94253. Again, that word is DECISION to 94253. And you can also stay connected with us every morning, 6.30 a.m., on our prayer conference line. We pray every morning. And then on Wednesdays, Pastor leads those prayers on our conference line and on his personal Facebook page. Listen, we have so many things going on here at the start, and we thank you so very much for you being a part of it. Enjoy the rest of your service. Father, you are such a great God, an awesome God, a mighty God, for there is no one like you in this universe. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, you are so worthy to be praised. Father, we just want to tell you we adore you. We magnify you. We lift up the mighty name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Had it not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Had it not been for the Lord in our lives, what would we be doing? But we are so grateful to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Now, Father, we repent right now for every sin done in thought, word, or deed, sins of omission and sins of commission. Cleanse us, remove all unrighteousness, renew in us a right spirit and a right mind. Now, Father, we lift up Pastor Beavers to you in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that you have given him a mighty word from above to him, the Father. And we pray, Father, that it would prick our heart, Father. We pray, Father, that it would quench us like never before. We pray, Father, that we would never be the same again because of your word going forward. Now we pray that you will rain down your glory on us like never before. Father, we need to be fed, for you have declared in your word that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that the proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. And we thank you right now that you are still King of Kings. We thank you right now that you are still Lord of Lords. We thank you that you are still the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the great I am, Father. And we thank you that the just shall live by faith. And therefore, Father, we walk by faith and not by sight. We don't have to see it to believe it. We believe it in order to see it. But this is the confidence that we have in you, that if we ask anything according to your will, you hear us. And we know that if you hear us, we always ready to have the petitions of our heart. Father, this is our decree. This is our declaration. This is our prayer. And we receive it by faith and consider it done. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, let the church say amen, amen, and amen. What a privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord. Anybody grateful to be in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. Can we just lift up a praise in the house this afternoon? Anybody grateful that he woke you up this morning and he started you on your way and you have the activity of your limbs? Come on, somebody just bless him. Come on, lift up his name. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. You're worthy of praise. You're worthy of glory. You're worthy of honor. You're worthy of a thank you, Jesus. You're worthy of a glory to God. Hallelujah. Anybody free to worship him this afternoon? Come on, tell somebody, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. I'm free, I'm free. Yeah. I'm free to dance and 
sing. I'm free to lift my hands and worship, Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. I'm free to dance and sing. I'm free to lift my hands and worship, Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Free to dance. Free. Lord, I'm free. Thank God I'm free. Said I'm free to dance. Free to lift my hands. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Because I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Come on, say, Lord, I'm free. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Whoa. Free to dance. Come on, we're free in his presence. Come on, lift your hands. However you give glory to God, just do it right now. Lord, we're free. Said I'm free to dance. Free to lift my hands in your presence. Hey, I'm a free worshiper. Anybody feel free to lift your hands and bless his name, Lord. I'm a free worshiper. I'm so free. next part says I thank God I'm free and I'll never be bound again is that your testimony this morning oh thank God I'm free and I'll never be bound again And I thank God I feel free today. I won't be bound by my circumstances. Never. Hey, thank God I'm free. I'm free tonight. I'm free in my life. Hey, I thank God I'm free. I'm a free Lord, I'm free. I'm a free worshiper. With my hands, I worship. With my mouth, I sing your praise. Yeah, hey, Lord, I'm free. I am. I'm so free in your presence. I'm so free in your presence. It doesn't matter who's looking at me. I'll still open up my mouth and bless your name. I'll bless your name. I'll bless your name. Cause I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Whom the sun sets free is truly free indeed. I don't have to be bound no more. I don't have to be bound no more. My sin can't hold.
free to dance and sing free to lift my hands and worship lord i'm free lord i'm free right now i'm free to dance and sing free to lift my hands and worship lord i'm free lord i'm free because i'm a free worshiper i'm a free worshiper i'm a free worshiper lord i'm free i'm free in my mind i'm free in my heart i'm free in my spirit lord i'm free because i am free praise the lord i'm free no longer bound no chains are holding me my soul is resting it's such a blessing praise the lord hallelujah i'm free i am free praise the lord i'm free anybody free no longer bound no trains are holding me my soul is resting y'all it's such a blessing so praise the lord I'm free in my heart, I'm free in my soul. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I gotta give him glory, praise the Lord. I gotta bless his name, praise the Lord. Every time I think about it, praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I Put those hands together give god a hand clap of praise let everything that has breath praise the lord we can do better than that if you have breath inside of your body if he woke you up this morning started you on your way put food on your table come on give him the best praise that we possibly can as you're standing to your feet and i'm thinking about the song and thinking about what they just got finished singing Man is a three-part being. Therefore, as a consequence, our salvation is in three parts. Mankind is a three-part being. I am a spirit. I possess a soul. I live inside of a body. Everybody repeat after me. I am a spirit. Say it loud. I am a spirit. I possess a soul. I live inside of a body so I'm a spirit I possess a soul what is my soul my soul is my mind my will and my emotions my mind is indicative of my thoughts my will is my desires my emotions are my feelings so man is a three-part being as a consequence the moment that we confess with our mouth that jesus is lord believe inside of our hearts that god raised jesus from the dead we are saved but our salvation is in three parts everyone shout my salvation is in three parts what do you mean my spirit 
has already been saved and perfected the moment that I confess Christ. My soul is being saved through a process called sanctification. And one day when I see Jesus face to face, my body will be saved through glorification. My salvation is in three parts. Well, guess what? My freedom is in three parts. Everyone shout, my freedom is in three parts. My spirit has already been made free from the penalty of sin. You do understand that the penalty of sin is death. The Bible declares in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. My soul is being made free from the power of sin. The power of sin is the habit of sin. My spirit is already perfect, but sometimes my mind and my thoughts are off. Sometimes my emotions and my feelings are off. Sometimes my will and my desires are off. And my soul is playing catch up to my spirit, if you understand what I'm saying. So I'm already free from the penalty of sin that's death. I'm being freed from the power of sin that is the habit of sin. And one day, I will be free from the very presence of sin when I see Jesus. Somebody shout, thank God I'm free. Come on, I need you to say it like you mean it. Somebody shout, thank God I'm free. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As you're standing to your feet, uh, I'm still in Isaiah chapter number 40. This past Sunday, we were in Isaiah chapter number 40. And over the past three to four weeks, we've just been trying to encourage our congregation so many people feel like quitting so many people feel like giving up i really believe that the intensity of satan's attack on the life of every believer i believe that he's turned up the heat if you've ever read daniel chapter number three the three hebrew boys were thrown into the fiery furnace anybody ever heard that story they were thrown into the fiery furnace well guess what they had the opportunity to bow to the image of gold they did not bow to the image of gold nebuchadnezzar was so mad that he turned the fire up seven times hotter and i believe with all of my heart that this is a season in 2021 where Satan has turned the fire up seven times hotter in the life of every believer. I don't know what your fire is. Somebody's fire is at the doctor's office, perhaps a sickness inside of your body. Somebody's fire is inside of their family. Maybe your family seems as if it's falling apart. Somebody's fire is inside of your finance. Somebody's fire is on your job. Somebody's fire is with your children. Somebody's fire is with your spouse and because the fire is so hot you feel like quitting but guess what the word of the lord today is just for you the word of the lord this past sunday is for you i, I want to continue to inspire you but i need you to come this sunday everyone shout this sunday I promise I'm going to get to the scripture in just a minute. Why do I need you to come this Sunday? I need you to come this Sunday uh, because I've given you inspiration. But Sunday, I want to give you some information. It's only so long I can tell you, hold on, hang on in there a little while longer. It's going to be all right. I got to give you some information so that you can know how to fight. Okay? And so this Sunday, I'm going to give you practical and pragmatic principles, information, practical things from the word of God that we can apply to our lives to help us day to day. You don't just need inspiration. You need information. You don't just need uh, information. You need inspiration. You need both. OK, inspiration is the wheel. Information is the skill. So whenever you have information, but you don't have inspiration, you have the skill, but you don't have the will. And whenever you have information, but you don't have uh, inspiration or, or vice versa, you have the will, but you don't have the skill. You need both. So today I'm in Isaiah chapter number 40, verses 30 and 31. Uh, when you got it, say, I got it. This is Bible study. So we're going to be hanging out in the book of Isaiah. Uh, 40 30 and 31 even youths will become weak and tired and young men will fail in exhaustion but those who trust in the Lord will find new strength they will soar high on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary they will walk and not faint even the youth will grow tired and weary 
young men will fall in utter exhaustion i like it the way the king james puts it but they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up on wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and they shall not faint father in heaven we honor you today we glorify you we praise you we magnify you you are so worthy to be praised above you there is none other from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same you're worthy to be praised from the east side to the west side you are worthy to be praised we honor you we glorify you we praise you we magnify you you were so wonderful you were so awesome you were so mighty you were so powerful in spite of our circumstance and our situation we come to lift you up in the name of Jesus we lift you above our pain we lift you above our hurts we lift you above every circumstance we lift you above every situation we come to serve notice to Satan that in spite of everything that he's thrown our way you are still God and you are still good you are still God and you are still good and so right now I pray right now that you would not only give us inspiration the will to fight give us information give us the skill to fight so many online and so many in purpose uh, 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 in person feel like giving up we feel like quitting but God we need you to speak to us right now give us clarity of thought boldness of speech to proclaim the mysteries of your gospel except you say it it won't be said except you teach it it won't be taught except you preach it it won't be preached except you do it it won't be done God help us to apply this to our lives Holy Ghost be stirred inside of us work inside of us both the will and to do your good pleasure as you were stirred inside of us and we surrender to you work inside of us the will to do your good pleasure to apply this word to our life that we will get results we're not praying just to pray that we pray we're praying because we have full total and confidence in you to turn us around and to turn this situation around I don't know what the situation is for somebody in here under the sound of my voice for somebody in cyberspace online I don't know what the situation is but God there's nothing too hard for you God I thank you for the testimonies that are yet getting ready to come forward the testimonies that are yet being birthed of how you turn things around in the mighty evangelist name of your darling son Jesus the Christ son of the living and loving God who's able to do absolutely anything but fail and who's already done it hallelujah thank you Jesus amen amen and amen come on give God a hand clap of praise you may be seated in the presence of the Lord so good to see each and every one of you this 12 noon I study at the star Bible study on a brisk cold Wednesday cold on the outside but warm on the inside and I'm glad to be in the service one more time the title of today's I study at the star uh, message is help I am exhausted everyone shout help come on I need you to shout it like you really need some help everyone shout help I'm exhausted uh, today's text is in the Old Testament book of Isaiah we learned this past Sunday that Isaiah is known as the eagle-eyed prophet the question has to be raised why is it that he's known as the eagle-eyed prophet eagles have the unique capability and characteristics of being able to fly miles and miles high inside of the sky but although they are thousands and hundreds of miles away from the ground they are able to look down to the ground and see their prey from hundreds and thousands of miles away as a consequence they can see their prey but their prey is unable to see them therefore they have the advantage why is it that Isaiah is called the eagle-eyed prophet Isaiah prophesied things and foretold future events that were hundreds and thousands of years away such as the death the burial and the resurrection of the crucifixion of Jesus the Christ son of the living God he prophesied the crucifixion of Jesus the Christ before it ever took place we know this to be true because the Bible declares in Isaiah 53 beginning with verse number five he was wounded for our transgressions who is the he that Isaiah is talking about he's talking about Jesus and him crucified he was bruised for our 
iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon his shoulders and by his stripes, the stripes on his back prior to the crucifixion, it says that we have already been healed. It is quite interesting to note that he says this in Isaiah chapter number 53, but we don't see it until the end of Matthew's gospel. He says it in Isaiah chapter number 53, but we don't see it until the end of Mark's gospel. He said it in Isaiah chapter number 53, but we don't see it until hundreds and thousands of years later until the end of Luke's gospel. He said it in Isaiah chapter number 53, but we don't see it until hundreds and thousands of years later at the end of John's gospel. As a consequence, Isaiah is called the eagle-eyed prophet. Everyone shout, he's the eagle-eyed prophet because he has the unique ability to see visions from God, things that are going to take place hundreds and thousands of years in advance. We learned that this past Sunday, but what amazes me is not just that he's the eagle-eyed prophet. What amazes me is that Isaiah has a futuristic eye, but although he has a futuristic eye, he also had a filthy mouth. I'm going to say it again. He has a futuristic eye on one hand, but on the other hand, he also had a filthy mouth. We know this to be true because when it is that you look at the call of Isaiah, everyone shout the call of Isaiah. You see the call of Isaiah in Isaiah chapter number six, beginning with verse number one. He says, in the year that King Uzziah died, you got to go hear Sunday's message. We walked all over that passage in Isaiah chapter number six in the introduction of that message. And I really don't have time to go back and do a recap. But he says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And when he saw the Lord, he says, the Lord was not on my level. I am the inferior. God is my superior. He says, I saw him high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple. But after he saw the Lord, the interesting thing happened, he saw himself. Because whenever you see God, you also see a reflection of yourself. In other words, he saw how high the standard of God was, and he saw how low that he was falling short of the standard of God. God's standard was so high, and he was so low. God's standard was so high holy and he was so unholy you can tell the people who have never seen God because they are full of themselves it is impossible to be full of yourself when you see God because white might be white to you but when you put your white in comparison to God's white your white looks yellow in other words, when you put your righteousness in comparison to God's righteousness, your righteousness looks like filthy rags. So Isaiah says, I see the Lord. He's high and lifted up, but then I see myself. And when he saw himself, he said, woe is me. He said, for I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. That's a filthy mouth. Everyone shout, that's a filthy mouth. He says, God, I understand that you are calling me into the gospel ministry, but you do know that I got a problem with my mouth. I understand you are calling me into the gospel ministry to prophesy to the nations, to preach your word, to speak your word. But you do understand I still got a cussing problem every now and again. And that's somebody's testimony in here under the sound of my voice. I'm saved, but I ain't forgot how to cuss. I'm saved, but every now and again, if I'm honest, my mouth is still filthy. Isaiah says, I have a futuristic eye on one hand, but on the other hand, I still have a filthy mouth. He says, woe is me for I am undone. I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell amongst a people of unclean lips. In other words, he's providing for God an excuse as to why it is that God cannot use him. Has God ever whispered to you, I want to use you? And the moment he whispered to you, I want to use you, you started to make up all of these excuses as to why it is that God cannot use you as if God did not know everything about you before he called you. I want to tell somebody, God does not 
call those who are qualified he qualifies those whom he calls i need you to hear me i need you to hear me this afternoon i'm gonna say it again god does not call those who are qualified he qualifies everyone that gives him a yes because he calls them let me teach it where somebody can reach it God does not call you because of he calls you in spite of not because I'm so good not because I'm so wonderful not because I always do the right thing not because I always say the right thing not because I cross every T not because I dot every I but in spite of all of my flaws in spite of all of my faults in spite of all of my failures he still calls me and nobody can throw anything up in God's face about me that God does not already know because when he called me he already factored in every mistake that I made in the past every mistake I'm making in the present and every mistake that I will make in the future as a consequence God does not call the qualified but everybody shout he qualifies those he calls come on I need you to shout it he qualifies those he calls we learned this past Sunday that the book of Isaiah mirrors the Bible. Dr. Beavers, how do you know that it mirrors the Bible? The Bible has 66 books. Isaiah has 66 chapters. This is Bible study. It's not in my notes, but it's on my heart. I need you to write it down. The Bible has 66 books. Isaiah has 66 chapters. Isaiah chapter number one through Isaiah chapter number 39. God is pronouncing judgment on the children of Israel who happen to be God's chosen people. Why is he pronouncing judgment? He's pronouncing judgment because they have turned away from the true and the living God to serve idol gods with lowercase g's that are not really gods at all. And the Bible declares that God is a jealous God. He'll have no other God before him. Somebody shout, God is jealous. Anybody ever dated somebody jealous? Yeah, yeah. Uh, anybody ever dated somebody jealous? Okay, let me give you this analogy. Uh, uh, don't mean to talk down about anybody. Uh, but whenever uh, you have a woman who may be jealous of a man and the man messes up, she has a right to be jealous. First of all, if he messed up, she got a right to be jealous. Uh, but if she's jealous, sometimes when she gets tired of confronting the man, uh, what she'll end up doing is confronting the other party or the other third party intrusion. Uh, and when she does that, it's not a pretty sight. Uh, it's not a pretty sight uh, because prior to her confronting the third party intrusion, uh, she had long, silky hair. Uh, prior to her confronting the third party intrusion, she had on diamond earrings. Prior to her confronting the third party intrusion, she had on high heels. But when she got ready to confront that third party, uh, she put that hair up in a ponytail. <laughs> When she got ready to confront that third party, she snatched them earrings off. She snatched them shoes off. She said, let's get it on. This is the picture of the God that we serve. Whenever we turn away from the true and the living God to serve idol gods with lowercase g's that are not really gods at all. Idol gods that you have to make because the God didn't have the power to make you. Idol gods that you have to carry because that idol God doesn't have the power to carry you. Idol gods that didn't wake you up in the morning idol gods that didn't provide for you idol gods that did not start you on your way God becomes jealous and he confronts us and that's exactly what he does in Isaiah chapter number one through Isaiah chapter number 39. He sends them warning after warning through the mouth of his prophets. They refuse to take heed to the warning that God sends. So God says, I'm raising up your enemies to overtake you in the Babylonian captivity in order to discipline my children. I'm disciplining you not because I hate you, but because I love you to turn you back to God. The Bible declares God chastens those whom he loves and he does it out of jealousy. In other words, I provided for you all these years. I brought you across the Red Sea. You got the nerve to turn your back on me to a God who can't do nothing for you. He confronts them. So Isaiah chapter number one through Isaiah chapter number 39 is all about judgment. But the hand of the Lord's discipline is so heavy on the children of Israel who happen to be God's chosen people that they feel like quitting and they feel like giving up. So Isaiah chapter number 40 through Isaiah chapter number 66 is all about comfort. So first he talks about judgment. 
But after he talks about judgment for the purpose of disciplining his children, he turns around and then he comforts his children. Thank God that God knows how to parent. He knows how to parent because he disciplines his children, but he always follows the discipline up with comfort. Somebody shout, he comforts me. And if we are going to parent the way that God parents, the fact that God brings discipline, then comfort, we must bring discipline, then comfort. Never just discipline your children and leave them. But after we discipline our children, we must comfort our children now this is really not a bible study it's really not a lesson on parenting but there are some parenting principles in this i want to give you three a's for parenting three a's for parenting number one attention everyone shout attention number two authority everyone shout authority number three affection everyone shout affection let's back it on up like a u-haul truck number one everybody shout it as loud as you can attention Number two, authority. Number three, affection. How am I to parent? Number one, I am to be actively involved in my children's life, showing them attention to the best of my ability. The situation may be kind of crazy right now, or you may be around your children. You may be in the house with your children and still absent because I work so much. Or you may be in a situation where you and the mother of the child or you and the father of the child are not necessarily getting along. And one parent has the child, the other parent does not have the child, so on and so forth. And you might not be able to be around them as much as you can. But in as much as you can, number one, I am to show my children attention. After I show them enough attention, not if they mess up, but when they mess up. Because I don't care how much you bring them to church, they're going to mess up. I don't care how much you take them to the schoolhouse, they're going to mess up. I don't care how much you do for your children, every child's going to go through a wilderness experience. But after I show them attention, when they mess up, then I show them authority. But after I show them authority, I always follow it up with affection. I contend that one of the problems with many of us as parents is that we show authority to our children when we've never given them any attention. If you understand what I'm saying? So I want you to remember that God brings discipline, but he brings comfort, attention, authority, and affection. So Isaiah chapter number 40, everyone shout chapter number 40. This is the first chapter of comfort in the book of Isaiah. After the discipline of the Lord's hand has been so heavy on the children of Israel, they are exhausted. Because their father has whooped them so bad, they're saying, God, I can't take no more. And just when they think that they can't take any more, God brings them comfort. Now, how do I know that they are exhausted? Verse number 30, Isaiah chapter number 40. He says, even youths will become weak and tired. And young men will fall in exhaustion. Number one, I need you to write this down. It's actually in my notes. The feeling of being tired and wanting to quit supersedes generation. Quite naturally, we do not think of young people as getting tired. We think of older people having wisdom, younger people as having strength. I'm going to say it again. We do not think of young people as getting tired. We think of older people as having wisdom. We think of younger people as having strength. But Isaiah says, even the youth will become tired. He says, even the youth will become weak and even young men will fall in utter exhaustion, which says the feeling of being tired supersedes wanting to quit. Watch this. The feeling of being tired and wanting to quit supersedes generation. It's not just older people who get tired. It's younger people who get tired. At the beginning of this message, before I started teaching, I started to tell people that I really believe that this is a season in the body of Christ where Satan has turned the intensity of the fire up in our lives seven times hotter. I mean, we've been through trouble before, but is there anybody in here uh, who can just be honest? I've been through some trouble before, but what I'm dealing with, I've never dealt with this kind of trouble inside of my life. I've never dealt with the intensity of the magnitude of this kind of attack inside of my life. And the fire is so hot for many of us that even the strong feel like giving up. 
I'm talking about the strong, those who are used to giving counsel to everybody else. I'm talking about the strong, those who are used to giving advice to everybody else. I'm talking about the strong, those who are used to being the shoulder that everybody else can lean on. I'm talking about the strong, those who are used to being a listening ear to everybody else. But what happens when the listening ear needs a listening ear? What happens when the shoulder that allow people to lean on them needs a shoulder to lean on themselves? what happens when the one who used to encourage other people needs to be encouraged themselves sometimes feeling like quitting and getting up supersedes generation somebody shouted supersedes generation verse number 31 verse number 31 he says but those who trust in the Lord King James version says but they that wait on the Lord but is a conjunction. On one hand, I feel like giving up, but I feel like throwing in the towel, but I feel like I'm not going to make it, but thank God for the conjunction. He says, but those who trust in the Lord. King James Version says, they that wait upon the Lord which says to all of us the remedy for overcoming the feeling of wanting to quit is trusting in the Lord slash waiting on the Lord I'm gonna say it again the remedy for overcoming the feeling of wanting to quit is trusting in the Lord slash waiting on the Lord okay uh two different ways to look at the word wait you can look at the word wait uh, it's in just sitting here. Uh, come by here, my Lord. Come by here. Oh, Lord, come by here. And I'm just sitting. I'm just waiting on him to come by. But I don't really think that's what this scripture is talking about. Just just sitting and doing nothing. Just just waiting. I don't really think that's what this scripture is. is talking about. That's one way to look at the word wait. But here's another way to look at the word wait. If you've ever been to a restaurant, those of us who've gotten out. Uh, since COVID-19 uh, if you've ever been to a restaurant uh, when you go to the restaurant if it's not a self-serve buffet you have a waiter that comes to the table and when the waiter gets to the table that man or that woman says may I take your order okay and if it's a good waiter they are so caught up in taking your order and serving you that it makes the time go by faster and before they know it they look at their watch and say I can't believe it's already time for me to get off work because they've spent all this time serving other people all of this time taking other people's orders all of this time seeing what you wanted and making sure that you have what you wanted so two different ways to wait on God you can wait on God come by here my Lord come by here or you can wait on God and wake up every single morning God may I have your order God, what are you ordering for my life today? God, who do you want me to bless today? God, who do you want me to help today? God, who do you want me to speak a kind word to today? Who do you want me to pray for today? God, may I have your order. Who do you want me to give to today? What would you have for me to do today? God, I know that my life seems jacked up. I know that I feel like giving up. I know that I feel like quitting. I know that in my flesh, I keep asking you, when in the world is my struggle going to be over? When in the world is my situation going to be over? But God is speaking to the body of Christ if you just wake up every day and learn how to serve me it'll make the time go by quicker somebody shout God may I have your order the remedy for wanting to quit is trusting in God slash waiting on God and when we trust in the Lord there are four things that take place inside of our life number one trusting in the Lord brings rejuvenation everybody repeat after me trusting in the Lord brings rejuvenation come on I need you to shout it trusting in the Lord brings rejuvenation for everybody who wants to quit God wants to rejuvenate you but in order for him to do that we must trust in him in order for him to do that we must wait on him as we serve God by serving other people it brings rejuvenation how do we know this to be true Isaiah 40 verse number 31 but those who trust in the Lord will find new strength 
The King James Version reads, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Anybody need new strength? Anybody need new power? Anybody need new might? Anybody need some new vigor? Anybody need some new get up and go? I mean, you may as well stop masking it behind the mask. We look good on the outside, but I don't know what y'all have been through. But I know that all of us have been through something. And if you have not been through anything, live long enough and keep getting up in the morning because either you're getting ready to go through it or you just came out of it. And if you just came out of it, hold your breath a little while because you may get, be getting ready to go back in. But for whatever you've been through, if you feel like giving up, God says, I know that you don't understand what's happening. I know that you don't understand what's going on, but if you can just trust me, he says, I will rejuvenate you. I will renew your strength. The renewal of my strength is not in a cigarette. The renewal of my strength is not in alcohol. The renewal of my strength is not in an illicit relationship. The renewal of my strength is not in anything immoral. Those things may numb the pain, but after the pain comes back, you still got to deal with the same problem. It numbs the pain, but it don't fix the problem. And I'm tired of numbing the pain inside of my life, but the problem is still not fixed because the antidote to numbing the pain is soon to wear off. God says, if you want the problem to be fixed, sit in the pain for a minute and trust me I know that's hard to do I know that's hard to do I know that's hard to do he says if you really wanted to be fixed and not just numb sit here for a minute and trust me he says and if you trust me he says number one I'm going to rejuvenate you number two trusting in the Lord not only brings rejuvenation it brings elevation everybody repeat after me trusting in the Lord brings elevation come on i need you to shout it trusting in the lord brings elevation how do you know that to be true but those who trust in the lord will find new strength that's rejuvenation they will soar high on wings like eagles the king james version says they will mount up on wings as eagles they will mount up on wings as eagles now here's why it's so hard for many of us to wait because i'm sitting here and i'm waiting and i feel like life is passing me by i'm seeing other people who started after me seemingly get ahead of me and i'm like god what in the world is up with that other people who prayed after me seemingly get blessed before me god what in the world is up with that and i'm just sitting here waiting and i'm just supposed to wait and after a while, I'm tempted to just take off running. And God's saying, it ain't time for you to run. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Because it does no good for you to run when you're exhausted anyway. The purpose of me telling you to wait is not on me. I'm waiting so I can put strength back inside of you. Because if you take off running when you're tired, you're just going to stop again anyway. So he says, just wait, just wait, just wait. But guess what? You can fly somewhere quicker than you can run somewhere. You can fly somewhere quicker than you can drive somewhere. So after I rejuvenate you, I'm not going to tell you to automatically get up and start running. But after I rejuvenate you, I'm going to mount you up on wings like an eagle. And all of the time that you thought that you lost, I'm going to fly you to your destination and you'll be right there just in the nick of time anybody know he may not come when you want him to come but he's an on time god yes he is god will restore the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the locusts have eaten up does anybody believe that god has the power to restore all the years that you thought that you lost if we just wait on him so he says when we wait he rejuvenates us when we wait he elevates us I know we feel as if we're in a low place, but God wants to elevate you. Number three, trusting in the Lord brings acceleration. Everyone shout acceleration. Come on. I didn't say say it. Shout it. Everyone shout acceleration. Isaiah 40, 31. But those who trust in the Lord, those who wait on the Lord, shall renew their strength, find new strength. That is rejuvenation. They will soar high on wings like eagles. Mount up on wings as eagles. That is elevation. They will run and not grow weary. 
God is so good. He says, after I rejuvenate you, I'm not going to make you automatically run. I'm going to put you on a plane so you can fly. But then after the plane lands, then I'm going to tell you to run. Because I'm giving you double rest. I'm giving you rest in the waiting, rest in the flying. But after you wait and you fly, now that I know that you have the strength to run, now you can run. He says, they will run and not grow weary. That's acceleration. That's acceleration. That's acceleration. Somebody shout, that's acceleration. Trusting in the Lord brings rejuvenation. Trusting in the Lord brings elevation. I don't have to beg my way to the, to the top. I don't have to kiss nobody's behind to get to the top. Because if you've got to beg your way to the top, you've got to beg your way to stay at the top. If you've got to kiss up to get to the top, you've got to kiss up to stay at the top. If you've got to sleep your way to the top, you've got to sleep your way to stay at the top. God says, I'm going to elevate you. And when I elevate you, no devil in hell will be able to bring you down. When I elevate you, no man can bring you down because how are they going to bring you down when they didn't put you up there in the first place? Says, wait on me, rejuvenation. Wait on me, elevation. Wait on me, acceleration. Number four, trusting in the Lord brings duration. Duration. Everyone shout duration. Some stuff in our lives, God may not move. But even if he doesn't move it, he would give us the power to endure it. Now, some stuff he does move. Okay? Some stuff he says, I give you the power to move. You speak to the mountain and the mountain will move and get out of your way. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Mark eleven twenty two through 24, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall believe inside of his heart and does not doubt, but believes that those things that he says come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. But then there's some other stuff inside of our life. God says, I'm not going to move it, but I'm going to give you the power to endure it. And because you have the power to endure it, it won't outlast you, but you will outlast it. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. Everyone shout rejuvenation. They will soar high on wings like eagles. Everyone shout elevation. He says they will run and not grow weary. Everyone shout acceleration. They will walk and they shall not faint. That's duration. In closing, I feel led to give you this scripture. It's not in my notes, but it's on my heart. And I need you to write this, write this scripture down. It's Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Jesus spake a parable to convey this one message. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. That men ought to always pray and not faint. Isaiah says you're going to walk and not faint. How am I not going to faint in spite of the weight that I'm under? Because I'm always praying. No prayer. No power. Little prayer. Little power. Some prayer. Some power. Much prayer. Much power. Stand to your feet. Everybody by your heads. With every head bowed, every eye closed. I want you to, to uh, consider these questions before you. Those of you online, those of you in person, consider these questions. Number one, if you die right now, not the next moment, not tomorrow. The next moment and tomorrow is not promise. And you are uncertain as to whether or not you would spend eternity in heaven or hell. Today you want to be saved. You want to be sure of your eternal salvation. You want to be saved to be sure that you're going to heaven with Jesus. And you want to be saved because sometimes life can be a trip and you want to make sure that you have power to have victory on earth. You want Jesus. I don't want you to come forward, but if you want salvation, I need you to just raise your hand wherever you are. Raise your hand wherever you are. If you want to be saved, I see you. Praise God. 
Number two, if you were saved but you have strayed away and today you want to rededicate your life to Christ. Maybe you grew up in the church and you said, when I get 18, I'm never going back. Maybe you didn't grow up in the church. But maybe you got saved and you just strayed away. You drifted. You drifted from God. You drifted from the church. God is not mad at you. He's waiting with open arms. If you want to rededicate your life to Christ, renew your commitment to Jesus Christ, just lift your hand wherever you are. Wherever you are for rededication, I see you praise God. Number three. Baptism is the way that we publicly identify that we are in relationship with Jesus Christ. It's hard being in a relationship with somebody. And they don't want anybody else to know that you are in relationship with them. Well, guess what? Jesus is the same way. He says, if we're going to be in a relationship, I need you to go public. And baptism is the way that we do that. It's the way that we let the world know I belong to Jesus Christ. If you want to be baptized, we're baptizing this Sunday after the 10 a.m. service, Central Standard Time, to publicly identify with Jesus Christ and let the world know I belong to Jesus. Just raise your hand wherever you are for baptism. It's one of the most important things that you could ever do. It's an outward symbol of a change that's already taken place inside. When I go under the water, my old life and old sins are buried with Christ. When I come out of the water, I'm resurrected into a new creature with Christ. Here's the last thing. You don't have a church home. For real, you've been coming to this church. But although you've been coming to this church, you've never officially joined this church. Membership has its privileges. As long as you come but you don't join, I have no spiritual jurisdiction over your life. When I pray for the church, it doesn't include you unless I call you by name. And sometimes it's just too many people for uh, to pray for one by one, one by one, unless I have a specific prayer request. But God has told you I'm your pastor and he's told you this is your church you believe that you belong here I believe that you belong here you wouldn't be here if you didn't and you want to join the church you don't have to come forward just raise your hand if you're saying today I'm making the star my church home today I'm making the star my church home wherever you are wherever you are everybody repeat after me Jesus thank you for dying for my sins thank you for allowing yourself to be buried thank you for getting up on the third day with all power in your hands come into my heart I make you the Lord of my life if I'm saved but I've strayed away I renew my commitment to you if I'm saved but I don't have a church beat me to the star I have decided to follow you Jesus all the days of my life in Jesus name Amen. Come on and clap your hands for everybody who just made that decision. Come on, y'all. We can do better than that. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This is the way that I want everyone to solidify your decision. In the pew holder just in front of you, there is a connection card. If you are not tech savvy, I want you to take out that card. Give us your name, your telephone number, your email address. Check the box that corresponds to the decision that God has laid upon your heart. On the way out of the door, drop it inside of the bucket. For those of us who are tech savvy, I want you to take out your cell phone. Text the word decision. Text the word decision to 94253 you see it behind me text the word decision to 94253 when you do that a link is coming directly back to your phone i want you to click on that link fill in your name your email address your telephone number check the box that corresponds to the decision that you made hit submit and then an automated email is coming to your email open the email inside of the email is star university star university is our new members orientation designed specifically with you in mind to give you the tenets of the christian faith the basic tenets of the christian faith and it has a spiritual gifts analysis because i don't just want you on the bus i want you in the right seat on the bus according to how you were gifted step number four of star university is in person it is this saturday everyone shout this saturday step four is this saturday in person 10 a.m right here at the star uh, all of our ministries are going to be lined up and we're going to take your spiritual gifts and pair them with the correct ministry that matches your spiritual gifts so that you can know where you fit and where you ought to serve i love you so much 
uh, let's go to the screen for our video announcements. What a kickback set. 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 Where the kickback at? Well, it's Friday, November 5th, 7 p.m. And it's for all of our young adults. So it's going to be a time of fellowship, food, and fun. I don't want you to miss it. Be a part of the kickback. I would like to take this time to thank our First Lady Candace Beavers and Brooke Smetley, the CEO and President of our Credit Union, for a job well done for the first time home buying seminar. What a great event it was. Thank you so very much. For your hard work. It is that time again for a Team Star Weekend. November 6th and 7th, Saturday morning at 10 a.m., we will have the Ministry Fair, which is step 104 of our Star University. Don't miss an opportunity to meet all our ministry heads and join 18. And then Sunday, we will have baptism service. So if you have made a decision to get baptized and haven't done it yet, please contact us here at the church at 205 833 Three six seven six, so we can get you on the list. There's so much going on here at the Star. We want to be sure that you stay connected, and you can do that through our text messaging system. Text the word Star to nine four two five three. Again, that Star to nine four two five three. And if you've been with us for a while and you're ready to join Team Star, text the word Decision to nine four two five three. Again, that word is Decision to nine four two five. And you can also stay connected with us every morning, 6.30 a.m. on our prayer conference line. We pray every morning. And then on Wednesdays, Pastor leads those prayers on our conference line and on his personal Facebook page. Listen, we have so many things going on here at the start, and we thank you so very much for you being a part of it. Enjoy the rest of your service. All right, everybody stand to your feet. Give the Lord a hand, praise. I pray that you have been blessed on today. To all of the uh, young adults, this Friday, 7.30 p.m., they are going to be at Spare Time, Spare Time in Trustville. This Friday, 7.30 p.m., Spare Time in Trustville. Everybody's paying their own way, uh, but they having a kickback. And uh, it'd be a great way for you to get out and meet some of the other members of our church. And I'm super duper excited about it. And uh, we are one church for generations. So we're doing this for the young adults. But uh, if you're not in the young adult generation, your generation will be soon. But this Friday, 7.30 p.m., spare time in Trustville is going to be a kickback. You don't have to be a member to come. You can just come. You can come kick it with us. You can come hang out with us. If you want more information, I'll post it on my Facebook page. And I, you can make sure that you go to my Facebook or my Instagram to get all of the details and the information. Our worship is not complete until we give. Several ways to be able to give. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. We're open if you want to give in person. Sunday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're open. We have a drop box open 24 hours a day. And if you want to give in person, we also have a kiosk in the lobby. You can mail in your cash, your checks, your money orders. The 7400 London Avenue, South Birmingham, Alabama, 35206. Give online, beat me to the star.net forward slash give. Give by text. Text the amount that got us laid upon your heart to 855-912-7781. Cash app, dollar sign, beat me to the star. Venmo at beat me to the star. Lord, bless the food we're about to receive. Bless the hands and the hearts that are preparing it. May it be for the nourishment and the enjoyment of our bodies. Take us from this place, but never from your presence. Bless the gifts and the givers. May they be used for the edification and upbuilding of your kingdom. Now unto him that's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God our Savior be their glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And everyone that agreed with this prayer shout amen, amen.